YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we've got the extra 300. We've been promising to review this. This happens to be the version two, which has the AR631 under here, which is pretty sweet. Not a big difference in setup, but as you can see from watching the unbox build and radio setup, which is gonna follow the flights, that it's really pretty simple stuff. That being said, we're gonna take off right now. Throttle cuts off, elevator, ailerons, rudder. By the way, if you guys didn't already know this, this thing gets off the ground very quick if you'd like. So we'll demonstrate now. I'm in my middle expo setting. We did a little bit different than Emmanuel suggested with all 100% rates and 20% expo across the board. And then uh, we did, well actually, hold on, we'll just show you that real quick. 20% across the board. Zero, 20%, and then 50% with 80% rates. So big amount of expo on our relaxed rate, but let's check it out. Here we go. You ready, camera crew? Mm -hmm. As I suggested, you can get that thing in the air without any problems. We are flying a 50C pack on this flight, 2200 4S. 50C pack. And this thing is incredible. It's so powerful. It's so like, that's 30% throttle there, folks. Okay, I'm gonna show you 100% throttle. There's 100%. <laughs> it just goes where you want it to go and does what you want it to do. And it looks really good doing it. I'm in my mid expo rate. You can see unlimited vertical. And the thing just moves so fast. I mean, you gotta be super muted on your controls. <laughs> if you don't want it to do craziness like that, you gotta be pretty muted. That was about 10% elevator on that turn on that pull out. Guys, it makes you look like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. And one thing I can definitely say about this is I am riding the CG back just a hair beyond the recommended point. So basically the battery is pushed just a little bit further back than recommended by the manufacturer. And the reason I do that is so that I can more easily hammerhead like this, because I love doing that. That's, that's about 30% throttle, by the way, there. Oh, and then by the way, this plane does come equipped with safe select. Obviously we're an AS3X here, but here's safe. As you can see, good limits on up, good limits on roll left, roll left, roll right, roll left, roll right and then up and down. Very good limits, folks. Okay, so out of safe. We did get about 10 minutes of flight time on a 30C pack and into safe. As you can see, safe won't stop a stall. So just be aware. We're gonna fly over here so we can get out of this. I'm gonna go in front of here for just mm -hmm. a sec. Sorry about that. Look at the high contrast though. Just love the checkerboard on the bottom. Love the fact that you can just hold that thing basically still right where you want. And then take off some landings or a breeze with this plane. But you do have to be a little bit careful to keep it on the mains because watch what happens. Let's show them a landing here. Mm -hmm. No flaps, obviously. You don't even need flaps on this plane. You just bring it in nice and slow. And what happens is if you pull it too sharp, then the wheel pants drag the ground. Full throttle and up and we're getting it back down <laughs> it's just incredible folks it just does everything you want it to it does it in a zippy fashion but then it doesn't bite as hard as you might think it would and we haven't even taken out of the relaxed mode we'll go into crazy mode here where there's no expo and that's about 10% input, maybe 15% on the uh, ailerons to get that spin. 
about 30% throttle here, 40, 50, 60, 70. And as you can see, not maybe the cleanest hammerhead you've ever seen, but I'm not a 3D pilot, folks. And then look at this thing. It's just, we're gonna do a landing with, with no expo. See, like I said, those wheel pants will bite you. No expo. So if you guys are thinking about getting a 3D plane, we know we've reviewed a few different planes, but we just want you to know, by the way, that's about 60% stick on the down. So watch this. That's 100% on the elevator. Just nuts. So much throw, so much flyability here. Look at this, out of the throttle, and it just does no wrong. Don't let it bite you in the turns, because it will if you go too slow. But really, that's the only time you gotta be careful. You go up, you can hammerhead the thing down to the ground if you're skilled enough. Okay, now going into the 50% expo, 80% rates, and just look how tame this thing gets. Just like a sport flying plane, no problem at all. You pair that up with safe, and you're just flying, having a good old time. Got plenty of throws to do any maneuvering, get out of trouble. And yet it still looks absolutely fabulous while doing it. Now we are on 4S 2200 and this is a 50C pack. Not trying to pull any punches here. We don't ever use 50C packs unless we're called to do so. And the only reason we're doing that is because we flew our last flight on a 30C pack and get this. I can't even tell you that I am experiencing any differences. It's basically the same performance, but they do recommend 30 to 40 C. And we are, I would say, close to dead calm conditions right now. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, just about. The wood prop on this plane is just absolutely gorgeous too. Mm -hmm. See, even with the 80%, you can still, you can still hammerhead the thing. It's just amazing. Okay, I wanna go up here. I'm gonna go back to my normal mode, which means 20% expo. I'm trying to do a flat spin here. Okay. Give yourself a second for recovery. There's our power. Dead stick landing requested, dead stick you get. Nobody requested it, by the way. That was just made up by me just now. I'm out of the throttle altogether. I'm saving my power. Just gotta make it over the tree line. Just kind of relaxing. I got juice if I need it. A Little bit of juice at the end. And flare, there it is. Very, very good flying plane, very easy to fly, given that it is a 3D plane. Throttle cuts on. That was, again, five minutes past three. Yep. So eight. At about eight. Yesterday, or whenever we filmed that last video, we showed a 10 minute, tom uh, a 10 minute total, because I did the math wrong. I was adding five to five, I think. Yeah, and we kind of guessed too, because you talked a little bit and then we went in to check the Yeah, power. it was like seven and a half over three. Yeah. So it was like about 10 minutes and a half on timer, actual timer, but we had talked at the end, so we weren't sure. So in closing, is this thing better than the uh, competitive brand that we recently reviewed? I'm honestly at my wits end trying to decide between the two. They're yeah. both very good. Yeah. That being said, I think that the extra 300 brings just a little teeny bit more to the table. And you may notice some of my commentary regarding this plane is flawed because I made the mistake of forgetting that the other plane was flying on 4S. And I think in my commentary, I was saying 3S. Yeah. That was incorrect, it was a 4S pack. So that being said, there wasn't as big of a disparity in performance as I originally had thought it's not like I was flying 3, 3S over here on the competitive brand and 4S on this one. I was flying 4S on both. So that means that makes this one rank just a little bit higher in my book. 
So keep that in mind when you hear my commentary, and that may end up actually falling at the end of the video. Um, we have a little bit more wind today, maybe a three to five mile an hour gust once in a while, but it's otherwise dead calm. This thing does great in it. It flies real easy. The Expo settings we have gives you the locked in feel that you still want. AS3X did not chatter one time. I saw zero oscillation. Even in, even in the hammerheads, which is something that I'd like to master a little bit better, I'd like to be able to hammerhead and then bring the plane down, which is a challenging thing to do. I'd like to be able to do that. That's one of the skills I wanna learn to do. But in general, this plane is very fun to fly. It does everything you want it to do, and it does it in a good way. And so if you give them a look at the plane again, basically, if you look at how nice and finished the plane is, I feel like the finish, the fit and finish on this plane is just ever so slightly better. And when I say better, fit and finish, maybe 5% maybe better. But in terms of overall motor performance, throttle cut is on by the way, motor performance is better. And it's a, I would say it's a measurably better performance on the motor in ESC. So that being said, this plane will make your battery hotter than the other plane. Mm -hmm. So for what it's worth. Now you can do a 3200, you could get even more flight time out of it. We're running on a 2200 4S here, 50C. 50C pack is a little bit bigger. Complaints about the plane, this gets beat up no matter how careful you are but that's true on any foamy that has an access hatch like this, because as you lift it up, it's very hard to not avoid doing that. Also, the way that you have to pick this plane up, you're gonna get dense here. We had a lot of bubbling on our decals, which was somewhat ugly in my opinion, but it was so minor that it's like hardly an issue. So if you look at our overall performance of the plane, compared to the looks of the plane, compared to the additional power of the plane, and considering that the price points are so similar, it's really kind of an easy call right now that the extra beats out the alternative, but just barely guys. Uh, so hear me when I say this, I like them both a lot. And the alternative choice is a bit cheaper than this. So you gotta make your call. But here's the thing, if you're making the investment for the plane, you know, you maybe just edge it out a little bit with this. So that being said, if you want to buy one of these planes, help support our channel, follow the link in the video description below. Small commission goes from somebody else, not you, to us, helps fund our channel, and you can have this beautiful plane. If you don't like this plane, you like the other one, just scroll a little bit further. It's right there too. But anyway, we don't care which one you buy. Ultimately, we just bring you what we experience. And I need to tell you, if this is a nine out of 10, and that one's an eight and a half out of 10, that is a very small difference. And we are increasingly impressed with the good performance consistently from Horizon products. This of course is an E-Flight brand. Um, and so we're just gonna leave it at that. It's good. And it slightly edges the competition out in this case. So if you guys end up buying the other one, you're not gonna hurt our feelings. It's you know support either way, but at the same time, we want you to be as happy as you can get and in this particular case, I think you're gonna be just a little bit more happy with this. So that being said, you also have to keep in mind we've had two of these. This is V2, the AR631. I think it's, it's, it's an appreciable difference, but it's just barely. I mean, it's like set up, the radio set up went a little bit quicker. Uh, we were in a big rush because we were up against the sun. And uh, I would say that radio setup was very easy on this plane. Yeah. You do have to go into forward programming to activate safe. You cannot just use sticks down and in and then wiggle you know, one of the channels back and forth. That does not work. So we will show you that. If you're curious, just watch the unbox build radio setup. And it's fairly quick on this one too. So what we'll probably do is we'll plop this at the beginning, depending on how the lighting and the saturation was with the sunset. And this will be our first video. And then you can watch the True Maiden. There really wasn't any difference. I think we, we did put a little bit of trim in here. You can see right here. Yeah, you we got a little right. bit of trim on the rudder, a little bit of trim on the ailerons. And it looks like we have a little bit of plus trim on the elevator. So if there's anything that the competitive brand did better, I don't think we trimmed as much on it, but you know, really who cares? It's not that big a deal. In fact, I think we ended up with a bit of porpoising on that one, no matter what we did. So, but again, not deal breaker. It's a 3D plane. You tend to have a little bit more of that. I also feel like with the Air 631, you have a lot more tunability. I mean, a lot more. 
So if your hope is to factory reset, factory default that thing, and go in and reverse engineer your AS3X, possibly add some AS3X with flapperons or spoilerons, then you could do that. Am I doing that? I'm actually not. I know it's crazy. It's like, Brian's not gonna put flaps on a plane. Well, I don't want flaps on this plane because I've done it before and the full length ailerons are huge and you don't need flaps. You saw how easy it was to land this thing. It was just like nothing. So it's not necessary. Um, another complaint on this plane and others of the V2. I still want nominal pack voltage and we don't have it. That is annoying. We should have that. Now, I understand it's something that we've been asking for for not a very long time and the competitive brands don't offer it either. So I have G-Force and three axis of live G-Force data, but we can't get pack voltage. Why? That's a complaint I still have. However, if you put an Avian ESC in this, then you can do thrust reverse and do some really crazy tricks. Now, I'm not doing that because I'm not skilled enough to fly this one and show it justice. But if you want to, I feel like it's gonna work very good in this. Whereas if you get the competitive brand, you've got a vector involved, which is an external stabilizer in most cases, and you'll have to tear that out and waste some value. But you can get into that plane a little bit cheaper enjoy a very good similar experience, but you're gonna be more limited on tunability. You're gonna have the vector involved, potentially and more than likely, which means you're gonna have uh, AR620 probably is what you'd be using on that. And that's what I would use. So by the time you tear out the 620 in the vector, you can put a 631 and an Avian and get the almost exact same flight experience. But remember, 60 amp ESC, it's a big ESC. So you're gonna add a lot of cost to this plane if you do that. So anyway, that's my technical and experience um, bestowed upon you guys regarding the 300 extra. Now keep in mind, put that all in the context of I'm not a 3D pilot. So I do more sport, uh, scale flying is what I enjoy the most. And I do very much enjoy doing this, it's very fun. It's very similar to the helicopters I've been investigating and spending time on. So it's very fun, but it's definitely not my first pick within the realm of fixed wing aircraft. So if you put that all into the context of those things, wrap it up, tie a bow on it, then you can make your good decision. So we trust you, you guys know what you want best anyway. So that being said, very good plane. You do not need the 50C, the 50C is overkill. I think you're gonna be fine with a 30C. I would recommend 4S. There's no reason to even put a 3S in this plane. Like why would you do it? Just put 4S in it. If you're a noob and you're flying this as a first plane, a, don't, because it's gonna scare you off. This thing is gonna be way too touchy for you. Two, if you insist or somebody gives this to you as a gift or something like that, set your expo up even higher than I did. Like 50% expo, drop your rates to 60. This thing will still fly good and safe works good on it, okay? But, but hear me when I say this, I'm not recommending this plane as a beginner plane. You can fly it as a beginner plane if you are a beginner and it's your best option and you, you know, you're broke and somebody gives it to you for free, great. It's much better than nothing. But the thing is, this will do grass just fine. We show that in the other flight. Um, even rough grass, no problem at all. In fact, it does really good in grass. I should have shown it again on this flight, but I forgot. Um, secondly, safe is effective. It gives you lots of down, which is good because sometimes it's hard because they float, 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 float forever because you can't get the nose to go down. So. Horizon's been doing a great job of giving us more down on the angle limits. That helps a lot for people that are flying in safe. But again, would I fly this in safe as a beginner? I wouldn't go out of my way to do this plane. I would do another plane. And there's a bunch of other good planes that are great options. Is this the worst option? Absolutely not. There's a lot worse options you can get for first plane <laughs> that are safe equipped in a similar price point, the 1.3 meter uh, size class. And this is a sweet looking plane, by the way. Let's show the people the yes. plane again. So at the end of the day, do we love the plane? It's a great plane. Is it my favorite plane? No, because I'm not a 3D guy. But the thing is, if you're a 3D guy or gal, then this plane is for you and you will absolutely love it. It is gonna be one of your favorites. And that being said, it's an everyday flyer by all measure. Top loading battery tray, four, you know, you could, 4S 2200, who doesn't have a 4S 2200? It's a really common battery size. Super easy radio setup, super resilient build, really easy. It, it checks all the boxes to be a good experience. So I would definitely encourage you to get one and just look how huge the surfaces are. It's just amazing. Yeah. 
And yes, don't forget, I hear that click too, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what the click is, by the way. I think the click is the tail dragger popping the plastic as it goes by. Oh, that makes sense. So if you guys are hearing that, you'll also notice this one is not as loud as other 3D planes that we've had in the past. Not as loud? Yeah, the, motor? the AS3X isn't noisy. Oh, isn't I don't loud. know why that is. Huh. Like for instance, the Carbon Z uh, Cessna 150T, that thing sings the song, it does, sitting on true. the ground even with no wind. Uh, this one is totally silent, yeah. which is great actually, I love it. And by the way, when you come by, just swooping by, it doesn't make a, a bunch of weird noise. I mean, you can like hear the Cessna 150T as you fly by with no throttle. <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't really bother me, but it's just a little bit weird. So, all right guys, that's all you get. The extra 300 by E-Flight, great plane. Definitely, I think, and I, I hate to have to be the bearer of bad news because I know some of you guys want me to say that this isn't as good and it's just a rip off and it's just, you know, an extra $30 or 50 bucks and you're not getting an extra value. But I, I'd probably disagree with you. Side by side comparison may come, but at this point, it's slightly better. So really? get this one, you'll be happy. Get the NX8, do not get the NX6, no matter how many dollars they take off of the price. E-Flight, uh, excuse me, uh, Spectrum is ran a sale during Thanksgiving. Don't get that one, get this one. It's more expensive and you will be happy you got it. I have already ran out of channels one time. That was on the P47 by Hangar 9. And I would have liked to have that channel. It would have helped me to have my knob for master gain. Mm -hmm. And I needed it on that plane. Now I don't need it because I've resolved that, but thrust reverse opens a whole new door of possibilities. If you have retracts, flaps and thrust reverse, and then you want safe and AS3X, and if you want panic, you're out. So forget it, you gotta go up to 10 then. I would not suggest if you are needing panic to get an NX10, just learn to fly first. Safe is just as easy to get turned on, and then you're, you're gonna be just almost as good. Panic you can set to a higher recovery rate, like a faster recovery rate but we've set up panic once, okay? And uh, it's just so cool. Anyway, guys, that's all you get for tonight. We really appreciate you, world's best audience on YouTube here at Brian Phillips RC. We have so much more coming and it's very excited for us to bring these things to you. We appreciate your support. Thanks to our patrons. We actually have a handful of patrons that are supporting us, <laughs> which is awesome and still strange to us, but we really appreciate you patrons. If you want to become a Patreon, just look at the links in the video description below. We also have PayPal for people that don't like to give Patreon lots of fees. We understand that the fees are part of doing business, but at the same time, if you're all about like, hey, I want 100% of my gift to get to you guys, then do PayPal. It's the easiest way to do it. And then thirdly, if you're international, we can't avoid a lot of that because it's international. But that being said, the best and easiest way to support us here on YouTube is to buy the beautiful planes that you love. And no, I'm not saying just this one. This one is beautiful though. We have hundreds of planes. We've done thousands of videos, like 1,500 some odd videos. So if you look through all our videos and you can't find a plane, you're never gonna be made happy. <laughs> Is that why we're still doing this? Yes, that's right, because <laughs> they keep coming. So that's why we love it. All right guys, stay tuned. Unbox, build, and radio setup is next. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've been promising you a re-release. And without further ado, based on previous reviews, competitive reviews. This is the Extra 300 by Horizon Hobby. It's an E-Flight model. Oh yeah. Oh man, we got some water damage on our box. What the heck? That's weird. So the Extra 300 we reviewed about a year and some change ago. This box got wet when it was shipped. Yep. I doubt it did any damage to the plane, but it's still kind of un unusual. You like never see that. I think that was a placement on the porch issue. Oh, they put it on the porch? Okay, well let's show them a better picture at least. Okay, so as you guys know, this is a beautiful, this is a scale 3D plane made by Horizon Hobby. It's an e flight product, 1300 millimeters, and it comes with a wood prop, so it's very similar to another plane that we recently reviewed, but just to be clear, it flies on 3 or 4S, 60 amp ESC. It does have safe and AS3X 
which is what we're used to before, but this one's different than the first one we did because it's got the AR631 in it. And the AR631 is the replacement for the AR636B, which was in the version one. There should be no other differences, but we're just gonna dig right in. We have already reviewed this, but we're gonna go ahead and go through the full build, the unbox build radio setup like we normally do. We were kind of debating about it because it's sort of a recent one, but just to kind of refresh your memory, and if you're new to the channel, this is, um, this is kind of our normal function, is we unbox, build, and radio setup after the flights because people always want to see the maiden flights, but not everybody wants to watch the unbox. Looks good, well packed, absolutely no damage. It just looks like the water got through to the cardboard, so we're good there. Um, we have generally good luck with our shipping from Horizon. Uh, we are sort of fortunate because we're only a state away, so that helps a little bit. Yeah. Um, unless it's coming from California and then it's all the way across the country. Okay, so reinforced pinch hinges it looks like. Hinge, hinge, embedded, embedded, embedded hinges. Can't see through very good, but there is a carbon fiber spar there. So this is gonna be very stiff and strong and definitely exercise your joints here. This is the horizontal stabilizer. This is the elevator, just to give you an idea, it's bigger. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, big old carbon fiber spars, there's actually two of them included, one for the tail, which goes into the horizontal stabilizer, and then one for the wing, for the main wing. Got the landing gear here, very simplistic, bent spring steel, beautiful wheel pants, hopefully aren't super noisy, but they always seem to be kind of noisier than you think they're going to be. Beautiful wood prop. I remember this from the last time. The last competitive product we reviewed, this is a 13.6, so I believe they used a 13.5, maybe. But either way, I broke it because I had a bad landing and struck the ground. Incidentally, the next Horizon model that I had a wood prop on, I broke that one too. It was on the P47, Hangar 9. So, but that's okay, because we had a uh, very good manual. We had a plastic prop also that we used for 6S. Yep. So this is uh, gonna be a pretty straightforward build because we have done it before. We'll try not to glaze through too fast. And also, is this a beginner plane? I suppose you could probably kick up Expo really high and then you could fly it as a beginner plane, but I wouldn't recommend it myself. 3D planes tend to be a little bit harder to fly. They're not hard to fly, they're not bad flying, they're just designed to do different things. I'm just kind of looking down to make sure everything's empty out of the packaging. And it looks like these wings, we can carefully slip those out. Monster servos. Look at that thing. 23 gram metal gear servo, huge levers. Control arms here. Reinforced hinge. Looks like there's three hinge points. And then obviously this is gonna be a little bit too hard to see through, but there are carbon fiber reinforcements in here. Not the least of which is however long this is, I think it's about like that. So you get a lot of bit of good penetration there. Very big control surfaces. Obviously it's a 3D plane. I don't think we set up flap rounds on the last one. I don't think we needed them because this plane just landed really easy. This type of box, you always have to cut the whole end of the box off. They, it's strange because all these different plane manufacturers, even the competitors, they seem to package everything kind of almost in the same way. So my guess is they're probably all hiring the same packaging gurus to come out and consult for them in their packaging design. But we've just had really good luck with our packaging on Horizon products. Looks just as good. Kind of some dimpling and bubbles on the decals, that's disappointing. But honestly, I don't care. It never really bothers me. This isn't like an ultra scale you know, F-16 or F-18, yeah. you know, where I really am super concerned about that detail. I mean, it would be better if it was flat, but I can live with it. In the air. It's not go. gonna matter. Okay, so we got a spinner here. Nice, nice uh, yellow color here, yellowish orange. Matches the wheels perfectly. Let's see how it matches the wing after a bit here. And we've got the hinge design here. Has to be glued in glued and then it can be pinned too as well. We'll probably use uh, China glue and then there's a ball joint here. Pretty simple stuff. 
And then we're gonna pull out the rest of the fuse. Now I'm trying to remember if the competitive one, that was a nut. Whoa. Why did a nut come out? Oh, probably the nut that's supposed to hold this on, I'm assuming. Oh, look, there was some water damage. That can't be the nut from this. What the heck is that? I can't imagine that being the nut. Maybe that was just in there loose. Like they accidentally dropped it in. It does fit on there. Hmm. That seems strange. That does seem strange. And look, we got corrosion on there because yeah. it must've got wet. Dang it, shipping, receiving people. Yeah. Sometimes our shippers will leave, we have a nice covered porch here and they'll leave it out in the rain. And I'm like, what are you doing? You yeah. got like 150 square feet there. But anyway, I don't know if you guys deal with that problem, but we do. Um, okay, so it comes with an, looks like an EC3 here, which of course is compatible with the smart packs. Um, not a huge battery tray. And as you can see, there's a pocket here and you can go all the way up in here to where the motor is. But just be careful because that's the bushing and the actual output shaft of that, that brushless motor. So if you slide your battery forward, you could engage that and that would not be good. Also, if you want to get this off, I believe you can cut this and it should come right off. So looks really nice. The scale pilot's kind of like, eh, take it or leave it. Some people love the scale pilots. On a 3D plane, I think it's cool to have a scale pilot. I just don't particularly care for this guy. I'm not sure why. So we're gonna go ahead and get the plane stand. That's everything out of the box and there's nothing on the back. So we're gonna go ahead and get the plane stand out and we'll come right back for the build part. All right, so we're putting this extra 300 together. Uh, for us, this is version two. So it's got the new AR631 in it. And the reason we're starting with the vertical tin, uh, the vertical thin on the vertical stabilizer is because that's be glued in. So what they're suggesting is do not glue near the hinge points. Allow the glue to fully set before continuing. Apply epoxy or medium thick CA to the rudder hinge um, tabs, which are these things here, obviously. Important, do not glue near the, yeah, don't glue in the actual pin. So if you, if you really wanna use epoxy, what I would do is I would put a, a white lithium grease over this or take chapstick if you don't have white lithium grease and wipe a little chapstick across this area on both sides and then work the hinge. Let it get in and then reapply. I'm not gonna be using that. I'm using foam to foam because I'm lazy. So foam to foam will work fine for our application. Um, epoxy would hold better, okay? But just knowing the way we're gonna use this and um, it's, it's gonna be fine. And yes, this foam to foam is kind of annoying because it always likes to come out like that with this aluminized tube. And uh, so I'm just gonna get a little bit on there. And when I say a little, I mean that's a ton, okay? Goodness gracious. Okay. And once we get this stuff glue on it, then we can just kind of set it. Can you hold that please? Mm -hmm. Right there, thanks. Sorry, I don't want to lose the glue everywhere. So then we just have to spread this glue in such a way that it gets on both sides because this is a contact adhesive. So yes, you don't want to get it into the actual hinge material, but on this foam to foam, it's going to be a little bit less critical than if you were doing an epoxy. Okay, so I'm just kind of spreading it out. It's, you know, not really rocket science. Hold the hinge with your finger, spread the glue. I'm using a Q-tip. You could use whatever uh, type of dispenser or tool or whatever you want, okay? So you see I got that on there and it just gets tacky and stringy like this, which is kind of messy. If it gets to be in too big of a mess or you get it like all over the finish on your plane, you can use a uh, kicker. We'll actually break that stuff down, okay? So I'm gonna lay this across there. And then in our case, you just take the Z bend like this and you see how that kind of has this poker coming out that actually goes into that hole. Okay. There's a hole right there and that's how you do your steerable tail wheel. Okay. So now if you've got one, two, three, normally I would actually slide these in first and kind of open up the hole a little bit. But in this case, I, I forgot. That's fine. I've done this enough times. I should know by now, not this exact plane, but I've done it enough on enough different planes. Now, if you guys aren't in a hurry, the epoxy is definitely the most strong connection, but I've never really like gotten super bent out of shape about using epoxy versus medium CA versus um, foam to foam versus some other product. 
But what I can tell you is that epoxy will give you a little bit longer to work, generally speaking, okay? And so if you are gonna use epoxy, you have to try to keep that stuff out of the, the hinge part. So you see how that stuff is displacing as you go in? I don't know how you would do that with epoxy without getting that stuff everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go about halfway through for my purchase point there. And then I need to, do we only get one Q-tip? We only have one Q-tip, okay. So this, I'm gonna wipe the excess off and just roll away from my joint and just take that off. And then I'm gonna go get some more Q-tips. We don't get a bunch of it in the other side of the hinge. Okay, so that means we're gonna waste a few of these. And then this I can work in once we get all the glue straightened out. And this will work fine. Medium CA is another challenge because when you put the CA on there, how do you keep it out of the hinge? Right. Same thing. You can do the same thing with lip balm or if you have a white lithium grease is what I would use because I do have white lithium grease. Okay, so I'm just trying to get this lined up and see now that I have that started, you can kind of start working it all the way in, getting full purchase on your hinge. Okay. And it's scarier than it, you know, it feels scary when you're doing it, but it's not really that hard. Okay. So now that that's in, you can work it all the way opened and then you can right away get in there and pull off any excess that you may need to pull off. Okay. And that foam to foam works really nice because it'll actually roll up onto the Q-tip and then you can use that to kind of take the rest off on the other joints. See how it kind of pulls it out. See, works really nice for that. Whereas if you had epoxy, you're not doing that with epoxy. Okay, and you can tell they're using a 23 gram servo for this. And it's over here. If you come over here from this angle, you can show them what I'm talking about. It says 23 gram. Is that a Metal Gear? MG, yep, Metal mm -hmm. Gear. So that's all that's got to do is move this little tiny light loading. So that's nothing, okay? We're gonna be totally fine on that. The reason we started with that is because I want that to set up for the next 20 minutes while we're building. Um, and then we'll be ready to fly. So next step in our case uh, would be, we're gonna put in the horizontal stabilizer and elevator, which is super easy. I usually just kind of join this, put it into one of those pockets there and then figure out the color goes down, the white goes up in this case. And then of course these things will key together. So that just slips through. And then there's a screw that comes in from the bottom on either side. Really simple application, very easy assembly as we've come to expect from Horizon Planes. The uh, builds are super simple. And before you correct me about this being a build, it is an assembly, I get it. It's just easy to say build. So we'll just throw that in there. Just be careful about your canopy. I have my plane stand in a little bit, so. This is where the receiver is, the AR631, and they've added in a small capacitor, which is good. As you can see, there's some extra ports in there. So if you'd ever need to go ahead and hook up uh, flap rounds or something like that, it would be quite easy to do that. Now, the other thing I can tell you is I don't have these all the way in. Yep, now they're all the way in. Well, that's gonna be tricky to get to this screw because that servo comes out right there. Oh. Yeah, okay, so what's the next what type of hardware do we use? The shorter I ones? Yeah, the shorter or, ones. No, we need a Phillips one too. In the yep. tail, right? In the tail right yep. here. There's a screw that goes in here and it bites this. And I'm gonna do that before we get any further because I'm gonna forget that. See the screw, Phillips? It just goes right there. This black is gonna make it hard to see. Our apologies for that, folks. Okay, so once you tighten this, it'll kind of run into the steel and that bites it. Now there is one on the other side, I believe, right? Yes. I so, so I don't know if you actually have to do both, but I'm doing both. And what that does is it just traps the, the little member that comes off of the tail dragger, but then it feels like it's just slipping. So whatever, it is what it is. The other side bit really hard, so I'm okay with it. Okay. And then just cycle this a few times before you have it hooked up so it's easy to make sure it's free. And it's free. Okay, cool. So now we need the machine bolts that go through. It looks like we got a bunch of short ones and a bunch of long ones. There's one, two, three, four, five long ones are for the wing. Mm -hmm. And then all the short ones like this are gonna be for the everything else. Yep. So that what are these, two, two millimeter? millimeter. Yeah. So two millimeter driver like this. 
throw that in really high quality hardware, which is good. We almost always get really good hardware from Horizon, except for on the Carbon Z, Carbon Z Cub. I don't know why. Didn't they use these? On the landing gear, remember? Yeah. Yep. Is it going? Yeah, looks it's like it. It's taking forever. Yeah. Goodness gracious. I need to turn this. I can't reach. When you build a lot of planes and you're getting to be old like I am, <laughs> everything does a number on your back. So this plane stand really helps to kind of get that closer to where you want it. Okay, so I just bottomed out. Now, same thing here. I'm gonna slip this in around that servo. Let's see if we have a problem. That is really a bad spot because I'm having trouble getting that started. If we had a ball end, it might make it easier to, to start this. See my problem, folks? Mm -hmm. So if you get in a situation like this, there's a trick. This servo is not pointed straight up. It's pointed straight up now though, okay? So I'm just gonna take this off. It's going vertical, okay? Pull this one screw out, lay that on the table, and then I can just take this whole control arm off. Then that should make it eh, slightly better. It's still pretty dang tight. You could actually pull the servo out too if that was easier. Okay, so that worked pretty good. I don't remember doing that last time. I oh, wonder if they changed the servos. I felt the servos were really good on the 300 Extra before. These 300 Extra, so full disclosure guys, I like flying sport, sport flying or scale flying predominantly. So 3D flying, even though I do it, it's more of just like, you know, playing around. So I don't fancy myself some sort of an expert pilot when it comes to 3D at all. And uh, I prefer just sport flying myself. So when you see me fly this, don't hold any of my lack of skill in 3D arena against the plane because the plane can do just about anything. All right, cool, so we're done with that. What's next? We're gonna do gear while we're upside down. Yeah, and we gotta get the control rods on, but oh. we don't have those ready to set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop them in here. They say in the manual to go to the outside hole, I wanna just double check that. The elevator is on the next to last hole, the rudder's on the outside hole. Okay, so the rudder goes all the way to the outside hole on the control arm, and I think this goes right here. I don't know if it's going on the inside. Oh, it goes on the inside. They don't really show that either. Some of these things you gotta figure out on your own. I'm not 100% sure that's right. And by the way, we don't know if this is centered, so I'm just gonna press that in there loosely. Mm -hmm. And we do need to remember to snap that on once we've centered our control surfaces after we've fired everything up. That's weird. So this is supposed to be on the next to last hole. I think this one goes on the outside, meaning it's on, it's, it wants to write on the outside of the control arm. This one wanted to write on the inside. And can you show the people from vertical after I get this in so they can kind of see what I'm talking about. Man, that's more resistance than I expected. So I'm not gonna snap this on yet. These ball joints are very hard to undo. But you see what I'm talking about? Like that's pushing it out, but it's lined up basically. Mm. So it's like this. See how it's lined up? Right here goes straight. If this was on the outside, it would have to bend a ton to make that connection. The opposite is true here. If that was on the inside, it would have to bend a ton to make the joint. Okay, so we'll get those finished up shortly. We're gonna put landing gear on real quick. The build on this plane is super simple. That's why I wanted to start with the rudder, um, just for the simple fact that there just isn't that many steps. And by the way, this foam to foam, you can buy that when you're ordering the plane. It's a good product, but when it starts getting a little bit low like this, that aluminized tube makes it want to poop out really quick when you open the cap. So just have something to catch the drips. It has held up really good. It lasts a long time. It tacks up evenly. The consistency is good. This is pretty obvious which direction this goes. Drops in like this. Okay, then this thing, this is shaped. It's got a little curve to it. The curve goes toward the tail. 
okay? And you can see it fits in there flush and perfect. What's, what length do we the have? The longer or the shorter? shorter? ones too. Okay. The shorter ones you say? Mm -hmm. Yep, shorter ones for sure. Okay, so we'll throw this in here. Got a little bubbling on the paint here. That's disappointing right there, see? Oh, yeah. What's going on with that? I wonder if we could poke it with a, a pin and collapse that bubble. Oh, I just popped it. Popped it. And then it stuck down, nice. Yeah. I don't know what was going on there. That's very weird. It's weird. Um, okay, so we've got four bolts to do here. We're gonna have to leave this off for the next step too, which is to get the wing installed because we're gonna have to pass the Y cable through. And what we'll do is, I believe we kind of half assemble the wing from one half of the fuse. This is a mid fuse, uh, mid wing. So it's not on the bottom, it's not on the top, it's in the middle of the fuselage. So that means that we have to slide one half in and the other half, which is, again, quite ironic compared to the other recently reviewed aircraft. And we, we love working with a lot of different variety of manufacturers right now because it's really nice because we can really showcase the differences. But I must say, and this is something I, it's, it's, it's a caveat that Horizon has earned and that is we almost never have a straight up bad Horizon product. We have had like two or three that were bad. And when I say bad, I mean they weren't very good or they were a little bit more expensive than the competitive offering. Um, and that was mostly in the toy grade stuff. So you start getting into the toy grade stuff. I mean, you got to make a really good toy grade plane to make it good enough to satisfy us. So, all right, so the wings have this overlap in them. Okay, so if you were to view these like a puzzle, they just slide in together. But you have to obviously, you have to obviously put this joiner in, okay? Uh, the wing spar, and then it just kind of comes into the other side just like that. And then your aileron cables need to be pulled up. And then these things slide under. Can you hold that aileron cable? Possibly, can you reach both mm -hmm. of them? Oh, both of them, yep. Just like that, okay. So now, all we have to do is basically, I'm just gonna try to pull this so that it gets good purchase all the way down. And then the screws are gonna actually pass through from the bottom, correct? Yes. Yep, they, pa they pass through through the bottom here. Okay, so this is not gonna be able to be assembled first because of servos. So my apologies, folks, you don't actually put it together like that. You slide this in first. I forgot about that detail. And we have aileron extension cables, right? Not extension cables. There's a Y cable. Y cable. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is going to basically be slip through. Okay. And then this goes along the edge of this. Okay. And I can see the aileron cable right there. You want to show them? I'm going to grab the forcep just so it's super easy to do. By the way, if you're hearing a bunch of beeping in the background, that is because we are currently charging a bunch of batteries. It's been terrible weather here for weeks. And so we haven't had an opportunity to do a lot of flying, which is super bummer because we've got a lot of content to get done. Okay, so aileron, might as well plug it into the Y cable now. They do provide a Y cable. Okay, brown to brown, uh, yellow to yellow, and then red is in the center, so you, you would have it right either way. <laughs> yep. So I'm just gonna slip that in there, let it snap, and then that's ready to rock and roll. The ailerons plug in to port two, more than likely, but I'll wait and actually get it plugged into the wing first. Okay. So you see then this can just be guided in, real easy. And then I want to kind of set this down on top of the spar. You know, a lot easier to get the second wing in because there's more things guiding it. Funny thing is the competitive plane, this was kind of a pain in the butt too, this step. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you look, you can see the aileron tag and you're probably thinking, why did you get the forceps for grabbing that one wire? Well, I didn't for that wire, I got it for this wire because I knew we were gonna have trouble reaching it, okay? And forceps are just a great tool. Hemostats, forceps, whatever you want to call them, are real nice because you can get in there and clamp on without damaging stuff. Don't clamp onto your wires though. You will damage the wires. If you clamp, these things have that little bite point. 
And you can put tons of pressure. I mean, you can cut off somebody's vein with that, you know, or artery, whichever way you want to do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. See this port two. Now, the only reason I know this is port two is because I built a bunch of planes. If you turn on your transmitter after it auto configs, you're going to know because you can see it in monitor mode, which will show in the radio setup part. So I'm just going to tuck that down. I'm going to tuck this down and then I'm going to take this little capacitor and I'm going to tuck it down there. And I had somebody the other day in the comments saying that that's not to help avoid brownouts. Well, that guy's wrong. That is exactly to avoid brownouts. So basically, when you draw down the voltage because of other electrical load, current, whatever it is, current or voltage, doesn't matter. If you draw down the voltage or you draw the current, you don't have enough current to satisfy everything, then the actual receiver can shut off. If you get down below a certain voltage threshold, boom, reset, crash. That helps because when you have a big surface, 23 gram servos doing AS3X like this on the ailerons or the tail of the elevator, whatever it is, or all together and given bursts of power, high load from the power, like in a you know, hammerhead or something like this, there's just not as much juice left for the receiver and the servos. So that's what that capacitor does is it helps to keep from having it drop below to where everything shuts off and reboots. Now it would shut off for long, it would shut off for like milliseconds, but that's enough to reboot it. So that's why they do that. Um, usually in higher performance planes. Now we're gonna have to hit the bind button, so we're not gonna get too excited about putting the bottom on just, just quite yet. Then also let's go ahead and, we have to put those screws in on the wing. That would be an unfortunate thing to forget. Seems like we're always up against the wire in fall. It's so hard to get things done when the weather is already good. So we try to have stuff done before the weather's good and it never fails. We end up getting busy or something. It's dark at like two in the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. And I do not have this all the way in, obviously. If you look from the side, you can see this gap. That gap's gonna totally close, right? Hun, come look. Show them what I'm talking about. This gap. Yeah. That gap's gonna close. I forgot to push it all the way in. So I'm probably putting the screw into the foam right now but it doesn't matter. Now, this is what I had to do on the last one we did. And that is I'm gonna do this, but I have to pull these wires up. When I tuck this stuff in, I did it in my haste. I tucked it into the pocket between the two wings. So my apologies oh. there, guys. So you gotta pull that up so that as the wires come over here so they can see. See, as I push these together, you see that? Oh, yep. they're, gonna, they're gonna butt up to each other. So you gotta be careful that you give room Jeez, oh, same exact problem we had with the other one we did. Mm -hmm. I had to pull so hard, look at this. There's not much to hold on to here. No. So when you're grabbing here and here, you can't, you just about can't help but squish the ends a little bit. And I hate doing that because it's like, I don't want to squish the ends. Um, okay, so let's see if these things line up. The competitive offering, we did have a bit of a problem with this. It wasn't like a big deal, but it was not perfect. That's already in. So that's good. good. Point to extra 300. But there's three more screws to go. I was going to say. Honestly, I, I had them. That was the hardest time we had on any of the builds from that competitive brand. Yep. That was, a good, was. That was a good play. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Oh, by the way, I broke the prop on that one too. Did I say that? You did. I did break the prop mm -hmm. on that one too. So what happens is wood does not give you any flexibility. Uh, if you run a wood prop into the concrete, when you're landing your splay out a little bit too far, you're gonna break your prop. Whereas with plastic, you'll just kind of shave off a little bit generally, unless you just really whack it. And if you really hit it hard, you'll break the motor, you'll break the motor mount. Might end up catching the ESC on fire. So you gotta be careful to get out of the throttle quick. And um, no, the answer to your question is breaking is not the solution for that, in case you guys are wondering. Okay, it's not going in. So I'm gonna use my hip and I'm gonna pull the fuse and lift on the wing. It's in, got it started. It so you see, I've got that Click. stuck up against my thigh right mm -hmm. on the front of my pocket. And they're going in rough now. So I'm gonna get a little lube on the tip. So when I say lube, what do I mean, camera crew? Dawn dish soap. Dawn dish soap. Looks like Loctite, but it's not, believe me. It's the opposite of Loctite. <laughs> okay. 
which is kind of funny because Loctite will actually lubricate your screws too. On the way in, they just don't lubricate them on the way out. Okay, so I'm gonna start this. And if I have trouble, I'll have to do the same thing, but this one up top, be mindful about your cable. Can you give them a shot in here? Be mindful of that. That is the vulnerable part of your antenna. So if you damage that little part, that 28 millimeters of exposure there, you're gonna basically ruin your, your receiver's capability. You'll drop your, uh, your signal response way down. Not to zero, it'll probably work, just, just it'll be a reduced range. So if you ever have damage on there or you fear you may have damage, definitely do a range test, which we never talk about. But range tests are a lifesaver on a plane that you're really concerned about. And especially if you're, we fly pretty close quarters all the time, but some of you guys don't. So, you know, we, we almost never lose range ever because we just don't fly very far from ourselves. But a range test check is nice. You just basically turn on the range test feature in your transmitter and then they have you hold the bind button and it cuts the power by 10 by a factor, by a factor of, uh, it's only 10% of the normal output. And so what happens is then you can walk off like 100 paces and then you can say, well, 100 paces times 100 is what, or times, times 10 would be what you could guarantee is good um, because the linear output of the radio signal meaning if you reduce the power, the amplitude of the signal, then you're gonna get less range, hypothetically. I don't know if it's strictly linear, but I assume it is. Ooh, that's terrible. I'm just gonna lube this. It's gonna be a lot easier than trying to force it in. So this one's just going in real rough. Let's see if I can get it out of there. So it's, sometimes it's challenging to get these out because the head doesn't come all the way out. In this case, it looks like the head does come all the way out. And so it's pretty easy to get it. I just use my middle finger and I grab the fingernail up on the head of it. And then that helps me to pull it out. Now, if you're thinking you're gonna have problems with feeding your screws in, then just put a little Dawn dish detergent on there in the first place. I didn't think we were gonna have trouble getting them fed through, but I should have, okay. <laughs> Better to hold the fuse than the wing, the opposite wing. Yep, there it goes. So we hope you guys had a great, happy Thanksgiving. We did, it was nice. Mm -hmm. We hung out with my family and Megan's family. And it was, it was great to be able to hang out with family and have some good conversations and connect with people that we haven't seen for a little bit. And we hope that you guys all have that opportunity around Thanksgiving and um, some of you might not even be in the country celebrating Thanksgiving. So hope you don't take any offense to that, but still. We have right. decent weather, it's always nice. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta get the prop installed. Now normally, okay. if you guys aren't sure about a plane, uh, putting the prop on at this step would be kind of a misnomer. Just wait until you're ready. Um, we're confident that we know what's gonna happen. Let's show the people what's actually going on. This is gonna go on. It feeds back to this nut like this. So it's all the way back. Huh, that's weird. Then this goes on. Then the nut goes on. And yes, we do have the rusty nut because it fell off in the package. I'm very disappointed about that. Oh, I need a crescent wrench, don't I? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have a crescent wrench just so it's easy. We'll just tighten that down. See how it's spinning? Sometimes it's a little challenging to get that to bite when you can't get in there and easily grab a hold of it. So I will sometimes use another tool like this just to get in there and get a little better bite, okay? I am super annoyed that that is rusty. Yeah. That ticks me off. That makes me wanna go back to the uh, FedEx guys or something and say, don't put our crap under the rain but it isn't really Ryzen's fault. No. <clears throat> Although it was loose, it should have been on the shaft. Okay, so then this slips over. Beautiful looking prop, yeah, by the way. good. Okay, so is this long or short, do you know? I didn't get that far. Sh uh, short, wait. It's yeah. short, but it shows a really short one, so I hope we didn't get shorted that short one. 
We'll start with the short one. If it doesn't work, we'll go to the long one. We oh, that's good. One that's of good. each left over, so that would make sense. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. All right, so honestly, that build was pretty straightforward. We're gonna pause, clean up, and come right back with radio setup. All right, we're marking the CG with the world's crappiest pliers. We actually have better ones, but I just want these right now. 90 millimeters from the leading edge at the inboard portion of the wing. Okay, this is further back than that, so you have to be mindful. Okay, so 90 to 100 millimeters back. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna make a little bump, okay? Then I can darken the bump so it's easy to find. Very simple. Then I'm gonna usually, what I try to do is I try to mark them both at the same, same time. See this? It slipped, slipped to 85 because I grabbed the wrong spot, whoops. Well, that's fine, we'll have a little extra range. So I'm just gonna, actually, what would be more detrimental is to mark them differently. So I'm gonna get them the same. Oh, okay. So the thing is on a 3D plane, it's largely a preference issue anyway. That's why this is maybe not super critical. I'm gonna go out to 100 millimeters, which is 10 centimeters. Same thing from the inboard portion. So I go to the inboard portion and just walk out. Then I'll just make my little mark. And then same thing over here, guys. Real simple process. Um, as long as you don't let it slip, then you should be fine. Okay, so now we have these little bumps and you're like, but that's ugly. Don't worry, nobody will notice. And then you can feel them if you have that little bump. So it works really nice. So we charge like a million batteries. We're probably gonna have enough time for like two flights if we're lucky. Um, okay, so the next step is to basically do the binding, but we have to do the radio setup first. So we're gonna do this in record fashion, record pace. This thing flies on 2200 through 3200, correct? Mm -hmm. 3S or 4S. All the way up to 50C is recommended. It's 30 to 50C. They said 30 to 40C. So I guess in this case, we'll probably just bring out the big guns. We'll do something in the middle. We'll do 4S, 30C. That's a pretty common size pack. Just so you guys know, full disclosure, that's what we're gonna fly it with, which means we're gonna also be setting the CG to that. And remember, we still have to clip on the balls at the back. Mm -hmm. So first thing we need to do before we even get into the binding process and getting the battery in there is we need to do the radio setup. So radio setup is usually a fairly quick and easy thing. So we're gonna turn on the radio. I think everything's been released. So we click these two back, uh, back and cancel. So here, I'll go back. Hit those together and then you could just do add new model. Alternatively, you can click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, that light goes out and you go model select add new model. Last one we made was a helicopter. So we're gonna create an acro, that's an acro. All right, so while that's coming up, there is supposed to be a washer on there too, look at that. We didn't have a washer on ours. No. Hope not. that's not a problem. It's probably in a box somewhere. Um, okay, so this is where you would set up if you were doing like a plug-in fly. Flight timer is three minutes. Then they're suggesting for Expo 15% or 30%. Okay, so we'll do our standard settings, but we'll go 10, 20, 30 or something like that. Or maybe we'll do zero, 20, 40 or something like mm. that because of the 3D utilization. Okay, so this talks about the different modes for binding. And then of course, safe select assignment. So yeah, so it's gonna be pretty simple stuff. I'm not even finding that chart. You wanna trade the sides? I don't see it. The ordinary bind and fly setup, where is it? Yeah. I don't see it. I don't think it exists. Transmitter setup, is that? Maybe, you know why? Because it's just so simple, there is nothing to set up. I can't imagine that. There's all ways up. Did they miss it? Thing. Hold on, let's go to the next. We're gonna go to another language and see if it got missed. We can just put that in the permanent file cabinet real quick. Yeah, look, it's not there. Okay, Weird. whatever, I guess we don't okay. even need it. It's so dang easy, you don't even need it. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, model name. This is where we're gonna type in 
uh, extra 300 V2. So we'll do that and then come right back. Okay, so we got it labeled as extra 300 1.3 meter V2. Okay, then we can go to aircraft type. It's a normal and normal. And we've already got a picture that's pretty close, but you can change that if you want. I'm gonna put it back to just regular acro because that's a pretty good depiction. Flight mode setup, I don't know if we need to do that or not, but I think we're just gonna assume we don't for now and we'll come back to it if we have to. They wanted a three minute timer. Three minutes is probably a little bit on the conservative side. We're gonna set it to one out and we will ride it to the limit. No one minute, no 20 seconds, voice for time or for 10 seconds. And then expiration is tone and vibrate. That's what I like. And you can do whatever you want and then a tone every minute thereafter. Throttle cut needs to be set up. Turn it on to switch H, check it. It's working, see how it's not changing throttle, and then when it's off, it goes to life. Turn it on, shut your throttle off. Okay, that's a good safety switch. All right, then uh, the only thing else we should need to do beyond that is uh, basically, we don't usually bind like this, so let's just do it the normal way. We'll clear, we'll shut off the power. Okay, let it shut off, make sure the RF light goes off. Throttle holds on, and we're gonna be doing a safe select assignment with the switches, so we'll show you how to do that. I've got this accessible so I can press the button when we're ready. Do you hear that? Yeah, uh, I bet it's the washer. I bet it is too. I don't want that washer to manifest itself halfway through the flight. Mm -mm. That'd be bad. So let's see if we can shake it free, if it is in fact what we're hearing. You know what else it could be? What? The plug. Nope, it's not a washer. It was a power, pull, plug. power plug. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this plane onto its legs. I'm gonna make sure that my controls are hanging down so they don't break something when they spring to life. And I'm gonna make sure that I am in a safe position as I can be. They have some extra Velcro in here on the bottom. I don't do Velcro like that, but you could, if you were gonna do it, you would just peel this off, maybe cut it in half, share it between two batteries or whatever. My experience is as soon as you put that on, you put it on the wrong side, okay? So I'm gonna slide this in here. They've got the mid-grade straps in here, so those are pretty good. It is tight in here, so it's hard to get the batteries in without marring your finish, so just be aware of that. These do slide through, which is nice. And then they've got the finger cutoff warning. Now you'll note that where is the prop right now? Go back just a little bit and show them where the prop is. We are gonna check the CG right now, which means I'm gonna pull this wire out just like that. And I'm gonna pull this back through as well. And you're like, but there's so much slack. How do you get that to work? I know, it's hard. See, because by the time you get this through, and that is glued in there. So you're not getting that pulled through, I don't think. Mine's glued. If yours is not, then you can pull the slack through easier. So if you have a battery that's like that, a battery strap that's like that, sometimes you can cross your battery straps like this and it will solve that problem largely. Maybe not totally, but it does help. So I'm gonna put the battery flat like this. I should be able to get that in no problem. Um, I'm gonna probably have to take that Velcro out and put some shelf liner in there so it doesn't slip so bad, that's really annoying. But we don't have time for that right now. We're gonna lose our opportunity to fly in the sun. And you can kind of see my problem with this. This is just extremely hard. They just keep getting stuck on each other. And I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna go ahead and get the shelf liner now, because I can't handle that anymore. In fact, I'll do the shelf liner later, but I can just lay that out of the way for now, because it's just making the battery slip. The foam will actually hold this better than nothing. Okay. You can see you get a bigger battery in there, but it's gonna be hard to keep your straps intact every time. Okay, see, it's gonna be too, it's gonna be too big. Okay. Yeah. So what you gotta do is you basically have to not feed it through. You just kind of pull it tight like this and then roll it over the top and then double it back onto itself like that. Or like this, depending on which direction it's Velcroed or hook and looped. 
See, I'm pulling that tight. Yeah. See how tight it is? You can tell by how white my fingers get. See how that's not moving? That's what you want. You want that battery secured so you can position it exactly where you want. Okay, now, this needs to be free of the prop in case something would go when it's not supposed to. This needs to be reasonably accessible. accessible. And then I'm gonna have this ready to go, throttle cuts on, sticks down. We didn't set up Expo. Let's set up Expo. This is a 3D plane, so we're gonna do this a little different than normal, dual rates and Expo. We set our Expo and dual rates to switch F. This is gonna be crazy mode, zero. The middle mode is gonna be the, what we expect to fly in. And then this is gonna be the, I need to land it because it's not enough. That's a lot, okay? So that's crazy mode. Then this will be like 20. And then 50 and 80. I forgot to do this one to 80 for the rates. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the three steps. So nothing, something, a lot more. Okay, that's gonna be true for all three. Now, why do we do that? Because this is a 3D plane, you might actually wanna have crazy mode. Anything more than 50 can start to compromise your ability to control AS3X. Okay, we're gonna start flying there. If it's not enough, we can do this. If it's too much, we can do that, okay? Throttle cuts on, power's going back off. Okay, so show the people from the side how this looks. Okay, once this comes to life, we're gonna be very careful. We're gonna treat this like a loaded gun, basically. We're gonna have it in a position that we don't get cut, even if it starts going and I have to sit here for three and a half minutes till the battery dies, then I will. That's never happened to me, by the way. But I've also not been cut. See how this, this would hit? You can do it without the prop. I just have found that at some point you're gonna be risking getting cut. Might as well be now, okay? Let it initiate. Okay, we're not bound. That's what we wanted to happen. I'm going, going over here, holding the bind button. So the bind button is held. Now I'm gonna power this. Hopefully you guys will get to see both. Didn't work. Okay, now watch, this is what I always do. If we're doing this on video, it never seems to work, okay? But if we do it, in real life, I'm supposed to be in function list, not system setup. Go back. There you go, right there. Okay, go back. Did you push the bind button? Oh, I didn't push the bind button. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, camera crew. No. So I have to push the bind button to initiate the binding process. So the bind button is just right on the front of the receiver. I thought it went automatically into bind mode. Okay, it's flashing. I'm sorry guys, I totally missed that. So now I'm gonna walk back to about here. Got it, first try. Watch the dance. Bind complete. Now, you notice it only did one dance. But we, we now have the ability to get our elevator set up. Before we do anything, I'm gonna get myself in a safe spot, check the prop clearance, and then give throttle. No throttle, it didn't move, good. Throttle cuts off, okay. Throttle cuts on and tested. Always check, do not trust it. Timer's cleared. Now that we've checked, you can trust it, but you don't trust it until you check it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little tool. Thanks John for this tool, that was nice of you. And Tom for the nut drivers. So we need this straight like that, okay? So I need to screw this thing quite a bit to get that to alignment. You see what I'm doing? I'm just gonna, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh my goodness, nine, 10, 11, 12, a ton guys. Tons, and I'm still not even close, right? Is that in my head, or is that pretty close? That's pretty close right there. Okay, pretty close or good? Uh, I think it might need to come out half a turn. Okay, give me your opinion. 
That's good. Yeah. Then this thing snaps them together. And I'm doing it backward. Whoops. Whoops, I'm doing it. I was doing it right. Okay, so that's on. So now the elevator works. Jeez, tons of thrill. It's <laughs> crazy. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide this plane like this. And then same thing with the rudder. Need lots out on this. One, two, three, four, five. I count, so I have a reference point, okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, it's getting close to the end. I am not there yet. I'm just trying to get this lined up here, so show them from above there, camera crew. Man, that's like way out there. A little bit scary, a little bit scary. It's still not there, is it? Mm -mm. See, look at this. We're like right on the end of that, but it's not breaking free. So I guess I'm going to call it good for now. You're getting close though. <sighs> yeah, but look, here's one, two, three turns and it's still not breaking. So there's one, two. I think we're safe. I was nervous for nothing. Better to be nervous for nothing than nervous for crashing. Okay, so now I have to try to do this and I'm in an awkward spot here, guys. So I'm gonna try to do this again, just like I did the last time. But it's like just, just a bad angle. Hey, I need to be able to see. Can you go behind me on my right? So you kind of grab onto that screw tip. Okay, so it's on. All right, now. Rudder. Show them what's happening. It's hitting here but it's not hitting there. Why is that? Why is that allowed to happen? That is so weird. Yeah. Why does it hit one side but not the other? Well, whatever. I think we're good. I think we're good on it. You can actually reduce your throws if you want on that. Let's go ahead and check CG. We're gonna throw this back on, except we gotta get safe select set up. And just lay this on the table. In our case, the counter. Get this tool out of the way. Okay, so elevator up, elevator down. Come over here. Elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. Roll left, roll right. Okay, no flaps, no gear. Okay, so safe select. Go to monitor. That's working. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, nothing's happening, okay? So scroll down to forward programming, connecting, this is where you wanna secure the plane in case. Okay, gyro settings, save select. I'm gonna put it on channel A, save select channel, gear. Okay. On. Okay. So safe is on, AS3X is on, but safe is off, okay? Except I wanna, I wanna flip this around. Okay, so how do we do that? Walk out, travel, scroll over to reverse, and reverse, okay? So now, safe is on, safe is off. Safe is on, safe is off. Safe is on, safe is off, safe is on, safe is off, okay? You can also tell by checking. Now I'm gonna just check the throttle hold again now that we came out of that menu. Clear the timer. I'm gonna put the battery hatch on because we're pretty much gonna go fly right away. And uh, we're gonna try to get a flight before it gets dark. But as you can see, everything is pretty much ready. We have our marks for CG, okay? See those marks? CG is important on any plane. Okay, it's pretty tail heavy right now. I would say that four or five millimeters back, you'd be center gravity out. So what you do is you'd either slide the battery forward or put a bigger battery. So I'm gonna go quite a bit forward. And then we're gonna recheck. I want it to be centered out on the back hole. 
maybe even slightly tail heavy. I'm good with it. I'm, I want it to be tail heavy. And that's because this is a 3D plane. So guys, without further ado, the 300 Extra 1.3, awesome plane. Hopefully it flies as good as we remember it flying. Obviously Safe Select is super easy to set. This is probably the easiest radio setup we've done in a while. This plane is beautiful, beautiful prop, beautiful size class, and Horizon does a great job. So if you wanna buy one, help support the channel, look in the video description below, right up at the top, we'll have the plane, we'll have the battery, and then of course, if you follow that link, you'll help to provide uh, financial contributions to our channel that you don't pay, somebody else pays, which is always nice. Obviously the NX8 has been great, we've been loving it. Don't get the six, even if it's on sale, get the eight. Trust me, you need the extra channels nowadays. I've, I've run into one plane so far where I ran out of channels with the eight. So the NX10 is a big jump, so I'm not suggesting that for most people. Most people can get it to work with the NX8 and then you can make your adjustments and then come back. Um, and the only time we did that was on the Hangar 9 P47. So full disclosure. All right guys, stay tuned, so much more coming. Thanks for watching. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this 300 Extra by Horizon. 1.3 meters of Pure Delight 3D plane with AS3X and safe. We're flying on 4,000, excuse me, 2200 4S, 30C Smart Pack Gen 2, elevator up, down, everything's working. We do have safe select assigned to our gear switch but we probably won't be using safe and we are in like uh, about 20% expo. Here we go. Holy cow, that thing is nuts. That's 50% throttle there. Looks like we're gonna need to get some elevator trim. As you can see, it's kind of pulling up on us. I'm hands off stick. Okay, let's see how this does after it kind of relaxes out of the stall. Just getting my trim right. A little bit of roll. Ooh, that might be the rudder. Don't worry, I'm bringing it back. I'm just trying to get my roll corrected. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, that thing spins fast. <laughs> it's so cool. Safe, safe. Okay, limited bank angles are probably about yonder, okay? I'm in safe, good correction, ooh, good up, good down, good yaw authority. Remember, safe will not stop a stall, okay? Man, safe really does make it fly easy though. Okay, so out of safe, into the throttle. That is nuts, that's like 50% stick that's input, crazy. folks. Holy cow, that thing is insane. Here we go, guys, I'm not a 3D pilot, folks, look at this. Hammerhead, no problems. Seriously, I'm not a 3D pilot, so please don't blame me for not being one. Let's do a slow, slow pass here. Folks, this is your non 3D pilot speaking here. As you can see, this 300, 300 extra makes you look like an expert and I am not an expert. Just crazy. I know, it really is. It pivots great. I think our center gravity point was good. Okay, we're gonna try going under the lines and back toward us. Okay. We're gonna go into the bowl if we can. You good where you are there? Yes. Okay, so we have another setting in the bottom or in the lower end of our expo. And I'm thinking I'll go inside toward the house if you're good. Yep. Very touchy on the sticks here, folks. Not in a bad way, just the reality is very touchy because that's what you do with a 3D plane, folks. Oh, we haven't even seen a cornhole yet. I've always thought the 3D planes kind of cornhole poorly because the pivot point is, it's such a long aircraft. Oh. Hey, go up to this edge, please. Right there, thank you, perfect. I'm already getting a countdown and I don't care. I'm gonna keep flying. Jeez, upside down flights, so symmetrical. It's like weird, because it's symmetrical. It's like, I feel like I have just as much ups down as I do up, which doesn't make sense, but yet it does. Going upside down here, you good? Mm -hmm. I wanna try my next up expo, there we go. Oh yeah, 
50% Expo, 80% rates on all three axis. This thing is tamed down nicely. Really, really easy. I want to just do a touch and go. Folks, we apologize for the low lighting conditions. We have not had good weather for this sort of thing lately. Just no problem. Man, that thing just janks around. What the heck was that? It's got the brakes evidently. I hit the wheel pants, I think. Trying to get some of this trim worked out, folks. I'm feeling like the trim is just not there yet. But I mean, just showboating around, this thing is super easy to fly. Not only that, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. I was surprised how good the lighting is really providing for pretty good visibility right now. Very high contrast on the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, woo -hoo, that scared me. I got into a high speed stall when I was coming out of that roll because I had very little air over the control surfaces. So cool, and then safe. Look at that, guys. That is just amazing, folks. That is just awesome. It's like you can do no wrong with this plane. It makes you look like a decent 3D pilot when you really don't know what you're doing. Look at this, look at this. No problems, I wanna bring it down, I wanna bring it down. Oh, not that direction, Brian. I'm trying to go backward, see if I can get it to work. I'm in my high expo mode. Whoa, let's go into crazy mode. Okay, here's crazy mode, folks. Let's see if I can do it. Oh my goodness, that's insane. This is no expo. Safe, nice. Safe does give you a, a level of confidence that is just nuts, guys. Look at this, that's like 50% stick input. 50%, watch this. 100% upside down, look at this. Be careful on that inside business because you will get into high-speed stalls if you're not careful. So a high-speed stall, for those of you that aren't privy to what's going on with that, is basically where you put the airframe in the way of the airflow that should be generating lift across the wing. So it's kind of like you, you crash into the air with your fuse. And so as a result, when your wing gets there, there's nothing left for it. You're just into this like vortex or this absence of air, like a low pressure system. And I might be under explaining that or over explaining that. So you guys can correct me in the comments below. But the idea is you basically are still flying fast enough to not stall and yet you are stalling. So hence the high speed stall. That is just nuts. I'm in my no expo mode here, guys. Just so you know, the camera crew is about ready to throw her cookies. <laughs> You're about seven minutes too. Oh, seven minutes on a three minute flight? Yeah, probably. That seems about right. Yep. That's mostly because I'm such a timid 3D flyer. And this is a uh, 2200 4S. So you can do this on 3S. They recommend 2200 all the way up to 3,200, mm -hmm. okay? So this is in no expo. Watch this, guys, no expo. That's no expo. And yes, those wheel pants reach down and they stop the plane. That is bizarre. Do you see that? Yeah. Let's try some grass ops for the folks at home. Full up elevator. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, no problem. Did it just fine. Our grass is not amazing there either. It's a little bit rough. But yeah, you guys would be fine on this thing with grass ops. Well, a manicured lawn's gonna make it easier. Boy, that thing looks good, doesn't it? It sure does. We have some really good weather for flying right this second. It's like dead calm. We have had, we have had like 0% dead, ooh, dead stick landing coming, guys. You ready? What happens when you dead stick land? Camera crew? You get out of the throttle yep. immediately. Glide. And then you glide. And then you save it for when you need it, like right now. 
And then beggars can't be choosers. Nope. That bumping is so weird. It is. Do you see the landing gear? I don't think they're broke or anything. Throttle cut's on, by the way. Let's see if maybe I just wailed on it that first landing. It was kind of rough. Yeah, what's going on is it's like bending and then hitting here. That is so weird. I don't really care though, because normally you don't land like that if you have right. a little bit of practice. Okay, so in closing, I feel like we're probably gonna have to get another video just with better lighting because I feel like we've shortchanged this plane once again, which is exactly what we did the last time we did the 300 extra. Because I think at the time it was like 10 degrees. It was snowy. It's a little warmer. Yeah, so we have definitely warmer weather. What a beautiful plane. I thought I heard something in there. So anyway, um, really pleased with this. To be honest with you, it's just, I'm not a good enough 3D pilot to really show you how good this plane is. But the reality is it's very good. Now, how does this stack up against the Eros? The Edge 540. That is a very valid question. Two things to consider. I really like this plane. Somebody's burning something and I thought it was my motor. No, <laughs> it's not too. my motor. <laughs> um, okay, so how does this stack up to the 540 from Eros? Or uh, the 540? Edge 540. Edge 540, thank Eros. you. Yes. Compared to the extra 300. Both 1.3 meters, both really high quality builds, very easy builds. Um, we ran into like no problems on either of them. Except this one, the nut came off and our box got wet because they delivered it outside, even though we have 150 square foot of coverage. So I don't know why they did that. And there's a cat. So is this better or is that better? Honestly, it is really close. Now, I say this is more powerful because when I'm doing it, this thing is very easy. Now, this one's a few bucks more too, but I think a lot of that comes from the fact that they had a little sale going on. So if the sale ends, they are gonna be close. So really it comes down to, you know, who do you like better? Who has given you better performance in the past? We are seven minutes. We probably start at five minutes over our five minutes. So we'll run inside, we'll check the batteries quick before we start our, our next flight, which will be on another day, because it's getting dark. Um, but the idea is, I think this plane probably edges out the edge a little bit. It really does. Now, why does it edge out the edge? Okay, the number one factor is very easy and that is power, okay? This thing is more powerful. I hate to break it to you, but the reason this is more powerful is because I'm flying this on a recommended 4S. We flew the edge on 3S. Mm. So a couple things to consider. Secondarily, because you can use the vector in their product versus the included in the bind and fly AR631, which I still honestly, sorry, Hobby Zone, I feel like that's superior. Now, they also sell that too, just so you know. But the idea is the 631 is awesome. There are some drawbacks when you do the vector, and that is you're never getting flaperons. Okay, you're just not. But on this, I could actually set up flaperons and maintain safe in AS3X without giving up one of the operations, like one or the other ailerons, okay? That is not a hard thing to do. I'm not doing it because it doesn't need it, okay? Um, but you could do it if you wanted it. And a full length, all the way from the wing tip, all the way to the inboard, minus this couple of four millimeters, is gonna be plenty good. It'll be very effective as flaps, but this plane just simply doesn't need flaps. It's easy to land even with Expo off. And this thing is nuts on with, with the Expo off. So that being said, very happy with this plane. Yes, it is slightly better, but yes, this is a bind and fly that requires uh, that you already have your transmitter. Now we use this transmitter on the, the other alternative. So does that mean that, you know, I think this is a lot better than that? Honestly, if I threw a 4S in that one and it flew, and I've heard lots of people tell me that it'll handle it just fine, I think this still has a lot bigger ESC, 60 amp. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say that this thing edges it out just a little bit. Maybe 10% better? I don't know, it's, it's, it's so really cool. close. Yeah. It's highly subjective too. And keep in mind, I'm not a 3D aficionado. I do have the extra 300 and I do have the Edge 540, and I do think that they're both excellent products. Are you gonna be more happy with this than that? 
honestly, I don't know because they are so dang close. I tend to like this a little bit better for two reasons. I think the canopy looks more realistic. That one had a black canopy that warned you about putting it in the sun and it would deflect. Remember? Yep. Which is stupid, but you know, like, what are you going to do? It's not like you can't just totally disregard that. And if it does screw up, it's going to look like crap. Also, this is really easy to put together. That one we ran into almost no problems. I think we had some trouble getting the screws in both of them actually, because mm -hmm. I had to oh, lubricate the screw tips. Yeah. So anyway, and if you're curious to see us go through the build radio setup, uh, it's coming up right after this. It was very rushed because we we're trying to beat mother nature, but honestly it took us like five minutes to do radio setup. Right. Because it was just put the sticks down and in and toggle the gear lever and then it didn't turn on safe. So you had to go into forward programming and do it. So be aware, this AR631 is set up such that you do need to go into forward programming to turn safe on and to make your assignment to whatever channel you wanna give. If you're using the NX6, it works just the same, just use the top channel. There is an auxiliary one, or you can use gear because you don't really have all the channels used up on this. It's just throttle, aileron, uh, throttle, aileron, rudder, and elevator. That's it. So, oh, and then uh, control of AS3X or safe in this case. Which by the way, the safe uh, had good limited bank pitch angles. So I felt like I still had a good flying experience. Uh, Might have slightly edged out the vortex or the vector. vector. Sorry, not the vortex, the, the vector stabilizer. But that all being said, okay, that all being considered, you know, if you're spending 90% for almost exactly the same plane and it's say 10% not as good, then it seems like almost a wash. So it makes it really hard for me as a reviewer to be able to say, yeah, this one's so much better and that one's so much better. Woo That's a good catch. That was a pretty good catch. So anyway, do I love this plane? Do I love that plane? They're both excellent, okay? Do I love either of them? I'm not a 3D guy. So no, I'm not gonna like give up my 80 millimeter F-16 for this, but I do really enjoy flying this. And also along the lines of flying the 330S helicopter that I've been kind of getting into along with the 230, uh, 230S, right? Mm -hmm. I've been super excited to be able to fly the helis because they do a little bit better in the wind in fall in Iowa, <laughs> winter in Iowa, whatever you want to call it, we're in now. Um, it is nice because we get a lot of wind and it doesn't stop for like three or four days. And you'll notice yeah. that there's not leaves on the trees, which means we don't have our hedge of protection that we would have in the middle of summer. It makes a big difference in flyability. Yep. So that being said, this plane would do great in the wind, um, but they don't show as good on camera, that's for sure. Yeah. So that being said, hopefully we have been exhaustive in our side-by-side -side comparison as we can be. Version two, extra 300. It's not that much different, guys. It's very, very, very similar. The added features are virtually nil. Just remember, this doesn't have the avian. You're not doing thrust reverse, okay? You have very limited additional telemetry. Let's show the people the telemetry. You have a receiver pack voltage or receiver voltage. Okay. You have all this useless information, okay? I mean, it's kind of cool. It's neat to see, but it doesn't do you any good. Oh, I seem to know what my, my pack has on it. So if there was a complaint that I have on this plane and every V2, with the exception of those that were installed with an Avian ESC now, and by the way, those ones came with the AR637T, uh, which would have supported direct voltage on a pack voltage anyway. So the ones that have the 631 that you want to upgrade to add the Avian, you'll be able to do thrust reverse. Now you can't throw an Avian in the Edge 540 because you're not gonna be able to do that without, well, I take that back. If you have a smart receiver, which I believe the Air 620 is still a smart receiver, then you should still be able to do it, but I'm not 100% sure. So don't mark my words on that. You may end up having to tear out the Vortex or the Vector, the Vector Stabilizer and putting in an Air 631 anyway. So just a couple things to consider, trying to be as fair to everybody. We love Horizon. Horizon's worked with us for a long time. They've been very good to us. Um, Hobby Zone has worked with us for just a very short time. They've been very good to us. They're making good products. We were thinking they probably weren't very good and then we got our hands on them and they're like, turned out to be great. But the thing is, I'm telling you, just a little teeny bit better. Also, don't forget 4S makes a big difference. 
compared to 3S. That was on 3S, guys. This is on 4S. So we plop a 4S in there, it doesn't catch on fire. I'm sure you'd be doing hammerheads uh, just fine. Did I miss anything? I think I've really covered it Do you want to go in and check Let's go voltage? check the voltage. We'll pause, we'll be back when it's warm. Okay, so we're gonna pop this open. We just came inside, we're cold. All right, let's show them inside here. Oh, goodness gracious. That was easier than I thought. <laughs> okay, so this is Gen 2, 2200 4S. 8% left. Hmm. So what did we go about five to six minutes over five? Yeah. I, so I would say 10 minutes without being totally insane, you'll be fine. Um, eight minutes if you're really pushing it. I would say five minutes is a good starting point if you're using an unsure pack. So if you're using some non-smart pack, maybe start a little bit. Or if you're doing a bigger pack, five minutes is way short. I mean, let's be honest. If you're doing a 3200 3S and you're not getting into it crazy, you know, you could easily go 10 minutes. But we don't know. So again, like I said, if there were a complaint to have on this plane, which is pretty much common across the whole board right now, is that we don't have pack voltage for telemetry. And of all the goofy things that we get for telemetry on this, they aren't really that helpful to me as a pilot, but they might be helpful to you. So you'll just have to take that worth a grain of salt. Um, also, I feel like the AS3X and SAFE work just incrementally better than the, the Vector. I mean, just barely better. It's not like a night and day difference, guys. So I don't want you to hear me when I say that wrong because honestly, the Vector is pretty impressive. So, and we've, we've run a lot of other aftermarket stabilizers. And when I say a lot, like probably 20, it's not like we've done hundreds of them but the aftermarket stabilizer is never quite as good as the AS3X. The AS3X seems to be superior in most conditions. Yeah. Um, and we used to run Lemon years ago and we had good luck with them, but they were never quite the same. You're always constantly fiddling with stuff. And I feel like with AS3X, you know, once you get it set, you, you don't mess with it. Yeah. Um, also, I did notice on this and the, um, the Eros, we had problems getting the elevator trim. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I do. And I think that's more, um, it's more of like a systemic issue with 3D planes. And I think I might've mentioned that in the video. So I would say that this plane uh, performed very good. Um, and at absolute worst case, feel that battery though. It's, it's pretty hot. It's warm. Yeah. yeah, that's surprising. I didn't think it'd be that hot. So anyway, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think it did a good job. It definitely speaks for itself uh, that it's a good plane. Uh, if you put it up against its most competitive uh, competitor, I think it still holds its own. But you could say the same thing if you're doing the 540. So no BS review here, guys. Uh, I love the plane, but you know, it's not like 100 times better. And it's not like 50 times better. Mm -hmm. And that one's not like 50 times worse, so it's just, you're right there in the middle. It's just gonna be like, hey, what's in stock? What one price hits your price point better? If you have a preference on trim scheme kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah, because this, I love the bottom of this plane. Yes. I love the top of this plane, and I love them separately, which is really good, and it's a very high difference yeah. um, in paint job. I did notice a 540, has a very good checker pattern, and then it's got stripes, but the color is not as drastically different. So in a 3D performance, I feel like this one probably edges it out slightly too. Mm -hmm. So again, highly subjective details, but when you get this dang close, it is hard to be anything other than subjective at yeah. this point. And that's coming from somebody that's not primarily into 3D flying. You know, I'm more into the scale things like this, but it is quite fun to be flying the 3D planes, especially when we're doing the helicopters, mm -hmm. which has been a really good crossover. It's, it's kind of neat because it's just, a, it's a different thing for us. So anyway, uh, very happy to bring you this. Uh, thanks Horizon for having us do your reviews. We love working with you. And uh, this is a great plane. You will not be disappointed. You're not gonna have buyer's remorse with either of them. But I think honestly, Hate to say it, this one probably wins, but just by a little bit. I mean, just by, by inches. So that being said, if you have questions or if you want to start an argument over which plane is better, 
Do it in the comments below. I will be glad to chime in with my two cents worth, but you've pretty much heard my $5 worth. And uh, if you guys have other reasons that maybe you lean one way or the other, definitely leave it in the comments below because honestly, it's very interesting to hear what you guys value because sometimes you value things different than I do. Also, the other thing too is some of you have had more flight time on these planes than I have. Um, and so that being said, if you're flying this thing for like two flights, your perception of the plane might be different than if you've flown it 32 flights and you've only flown, you know, see, we've only flown both of them. Well, for this one once, that one, what, like four times, five times. Mm -hmm, so we don't get to do the, use it for three months and really get to love and enjoy it. I mean, that was the true maiden out there. So that's why you get to see me trimming it. So very happy with the plane. Buy one from the links in the video description below. We'll link to the battery we use, which is the 4S uh, 2200 Gen 2, so there's no balance lead. And also no voltage alarm in here because we used a Gen 2. We could have just as well done this pack, which is the exact same pack, except it's a Gen 1, which means it's got a slightly less capable balancing circuit. And it's also got the balance lead, which is good because then I could put a voltage alarm in there which might be kind of nice. Maybe that would help us squeeze out the last 8% of the battery. <laughs> but either way, we usually set our times in the timer and then we just kind of go with it after that. Um, but as you know it, we will destroy the packs for you here. World's best audience on YouTube. We're gonna try to get you another video if the weather's terrible for a few days, you may not get it to all second thoughts. But for now, great plane. You'll be happy with it if you get it. Buy from the links below. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned, we'll do the build unbox Unbox, build, and radio setup next.